Coming up on the Trojan Football Report, we'll review Troy's loss at Georgia Southern last Thursday with head coach Larry Blakeney. We'll talk with Troy offensive coordinator Kenny Edenfield and defensive end Brandon Timmons. Plus, we'll look ahead towards the home game this week as the Trojans take on Georgia State. All that plus a whole lot more coming up on this edition of the Trojan Football Report. Welcome into the Trojan Football Report. I'm Barry McKnight with head coach Larry Blakeney. The Trojans fall at Georgia Southern on a Thursday night and have to get right back at it and play again on Saturday against Georgia State. That Georgia Southern game, coach, you went in a little bit shorthanded, some injuries and, and all that, and that Georgia Southern club playing at home is awfully sturdy. Well, you know, it's, number one, it's a tough trip. Number two, and most importantly, it's a very good football program. And uh, coached very well, and uh, synchronized offensively so well, and uh, uh, their, their athletes understand what's going on on offense. Defensively, they, they're not, their reputation is not a defensive reputation, but they're good and solid and sound, and they, they know how to line up and, and, and play. And uh, uh, so, you know, we, we had our hands full and couldn't quite get it done, you know, with, uh, with their speed element. and. Uh, we had some guys though that played hard and uh, on both sides of the ball, and, and uh, we got to continue to build on that and try to get better. The uh, the playing hard aspect of it that's been a constant for your club, even with the adversity. They're 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 doing their best with what you're asking. Them well, you, you know we we beg them a lot, and, and but there uh, there's a bunch of good kids on this team that want to do well, and uh, you know nobody wants to lose, nobody wants to play bad, and so. And these young men are trying hard to, to put this thing back together and have some positiveness come out of the year and, uh, and move on. The Trojans playing against a Georgia Southern club that had not lost in the league. Troy needed to get off to a good start, as you'll see. It didn't exactly happen that way. The Trojans got off to a poor start right at the very beginning, as you'll see amongst our first half highlights. Ellison, going to run again, cuts it back. Into the end. Right in the line of scrimmage. Is that Breed in motion? Yep. Ellison wanted to do so. And instead runs it into the end zone. Their first rankings. It's Fabian Upshaw now at quarterback handing off. And then Rita on the carry. Rita on the carry up to the 40. Probably oh. saying they have the football. Yeah. And a turnover on Georgia Southern side of the field. Just Rita trying to run through a number of white jerseys. Keeping the legs going as the knee down off. Oh, great job coming over with the strip before he goes down. Daniel Warren. A couple of field goals against South Alabama. 38-43 and nails that from 25 to get the Trojans. Kitchen is a leading tackler for this team right there. You see him right there, number one. Watch him follow the ball. How you find to do a become a lead tackler from the free safety position? Have a motor. Five tackles tonight to lead Troy and leads him on the season with 61 now. Ellison smashed down by Sam Levy. Levy. Face. This is good assignment football. Don't worry about the running back. Get the quarterback. He gets to the quarterback. Then you have to make a good open field tackle in space. Shaw gives it up. Ramsby is going to jog into the end zone. Crockett in motion. Ellison keeping. Makes a late pitch, loose football, and it looks like Troy has it. So when you play assignment football, you use on what to do with the football, and then they start to lose their timing and their rhythm. It's a good job of just chasing down the quarterback and then coming up. Make the hit. Mitchell Rowland does a good job. And have another turnover. So the Trojans in the first half, as you saw, give it up immediately on the fumble on the opening kickoff. Troy made a stand near the very end of the first half, trailing at 21 to three, but hopefully that was something that you wanted to build. Well, it was at least something positive we carried in at halftime, could talk about, and, and even though we had to kick off to them, we, we talked about getting another stop and trying to, and trying to capitalize on that stop and, and get back in the game, because 21 to three is not insurmountable, and certainly in uh, any ball game, and, and uh, you know, we still had some hope, but uh, they were diminished uh, uh, by the by, the Georgia Southern team in the, in the third quarter. Now, no losing Montrese Kitchens in the first half. I think he had 11 tackles. Actually, lost him early in the second half of that game. One of one of several uh, instances where you again had to play shorthanded there. Well, uh, you know, he and Jaquadrian Lewis and several guys were ding got dinged up in the in the ball game and. Um, 
in it. So, you know, it's a shame those guys, you know, they play so hard and they, and they, they're, they try to be physical as a defensive player and, and a lot of times wind up hurting themselves a little bit. And, and uh, thank goodness they're, they're, they're both able to go and come back and play again and uh, look forward to having them back. One of the other aspects of that offense you're talking about for Georgia Southern as it relates to that defense, which you said is very good, is their defense doesn't have to play much. They weren't out there on the field very often at all. <laughs> their so. defense doesn't, they don't have to play many snaps or minutes. And uh, because Georgia Southern, for the most part, they do have some explosive plays in their, in their, in, in their other games. We, we held them a little bit at least from having a tremendously long runs. And, uh, but, uh, you know, the, you're right, the defense is, gets a lot of rest and sitting time on, on the bench and examining what's going on. So the Trojans trailing at 21 to three. Georgia Southern has it to begin the second half as we take a look at the highlights from half number two in Statesboro. Ellison, look at the Or just run it in the end zone. You have to run again a little bit more. Brody's gonna take off, and he has the first down across the 40 out near the 44 yard runner. Ellison, they pitch. Ramsby. Ramsby. He's trying to add a second, and he does. Just the run. Upshaw with good blocking. Cuts back and is into the end zone. Smart. Good. Hands it off to Carly Franklin, and he's out the far side all the way to midfield. 24 yard gain. Eligible for. I guess I say in order to keep Georgia Southern out of contention. Franklin again off left tackle, and he's in, touchdown. Here on the Trojan Football Report, we spend some time with inside receivers coach and offensive coordinator Kenny Edenfield. Trojan offense certainly has not, uh, has not put up the numbers I know that you're accustomed to, especially over the last three games, but I know the kids are really playing hard, and that's one of the basic things that any coach can ask for, Coach. Yeah, we have definitely not reached where we want to be. Um, we've got three more opportunities to try to get there. That's the exciting part. Uh, the other part, talking to Coach the other night, is that, um, after grading the tape, you know, our guys are still playing hard. Uh, we're maybe not always making the right play or making a play at times, but we are playing hard and getting after folks. We still had a bunch of knockdowns last week and you know we've just got to find a way to convert third downs I think that's really been our biggest nemesis all year I think that's a great point but if another aspect of this and I wanted to ask you about this when we uh, when we scheduled the interview with you um, over the last couple of games your, your team has played from behind does that impact your play calling well I, I think it does somewhat um, you know it, the main thing is is being able to put yourself in position to make third downs to be able to play fast. We, we are a team that needs to play with tempo. Well, it's hard to play tempo when you don't make a first down. And so, you know, when, when that happens, you get yourself caught a little bit behind the chains. And that's what we've been trying not to do. And it, it's really not our style, but we've tried to do that to be, you know, to make ourselves in a little better on third down. But we've just got to play ball. We've got to take what they give us and play fast. And, and, and when we do that, I think we're a lot better football team. With the tempo that this team likes to play with and not being able to achieve it to this point like you wanted to. Can you talk about some of the other aspects of this offense that that you've been impressed with that you have liked so far possibly? Here? Well I think I think one thing we've done a good job of is our third and shorts. You know last year we were not a real good third and short team believe it or not. We have converted almost all of our third and shorts. You know that's a really good thing. Our drive starters have been over 50 percent. That's the first play of a drive has been really good for us. So maybe we just need to take those two plays and put them <laughs> together um, and, and run the rest of the game that way. Let's talk about your receivers a little bit. Uh, Chandler Worthy is obviously one of the guys that can that can make a big play and I know it's been difficult to get the ball into his hands offensively lately because he's been getting extra attention obviously from defenses because of his playmaking ability. Well I think they've, they've done a good job of that which should leave someone else open you know. Um, one of the things you have to do in the passing game is you have to decide are you going to throw the ball short, are you going to throw the ball long, are you going to throw the ball medium and I think we've had a hard time throwing it long and medium just from a protection standpoint being able to hold them out long enough or make our progressions long enough and so we've got to continue to do that. I think our protection's gotten better last couple of weeks you know we've still got to be able to throw the ball down the field uh, you know people start sitting on you and when they're sitting on you you've got to throw it over the top you know and you can only run the ball so much when they're sitting there 
ganging up on you. You've got to be able to throw the ball over the top. And, you know, being the third downs and not being able to complete the deep ball has, uh, has probably put a little damper on us this year. Given that the play of the quarterbacks to this point in context of what you're asking from them out of this offense, can you get, characterize that a little bit? Well, I think we've had some spots where we've played really well, and I think there's been some spots where we just played okay. You know, um, you know where we just didn't make all the the quickest decisions, and, and, and that comes from experience. You know, right. but other thing is getting opportunities. You know, if you're not averaging, you know, we've we've normally averaged around here between 78 and 80 plays, and I think right now we're at about 60. So you're talking about 20 to 25 less opportunities we're getting, and you know that falls on our shoulders of of converting third downs. It gets back to third downs. If we can make those third and mediums, I think these last few games, and that's what we're going to concentrate on in practice. Then I think we'll have a chance to continue to roll. Finally, on a personal note, you're one of not many coaches in the country that has the opportunity to coach your son. KD has been as solid as a rock. You know, he's started every game. He's been productive. How, how rewarding has that been to you on a personal level? Well, it's been real rewarding. You know, uh, not many people get an opportunity to do that, and I've been able to do it for three years now, so that, that's been good. You know, we hadn't quite had the kind of season we wanted to have, but, you know, the good thing about football is, is we get another week this, this We have another opportunity this week, and we get two more guaranteed opportunities. So, you know, like I told him the other night, hey, let's just go out with a bang. Let's try to finish up real strong and leave a positive note on everybody. I love that uh, perspective for sure. Kenny Edenfield joins us, offensive coordinator of the Troy Trojans. Good luck down the street. Thanks, Mary. Appreciate it. We'll return with more in just a moment. This is the Trojan Football Report. Here again with our student athlete feature, Coach Larry Blakeney intros Brandon Timmons, senior defensive end, who has been a, a real study and perseverance for your club. He really has. You know, he he is uh, he's a guy that has just stuck with it, stuck with it, stuck with it, and and uh, you know you. He's not the biggest or fastest, but at the same time, you put him out there, he's gonna make plays. And he's a smart guy, you know. He understands this game and and how to play. And uh, you know, he he uh, he's really been a pleasure uh, to watch him evolve and watch him continue to try hard and and stick with the program and and get to a point where he's playing. There's been some injuries that he's had to fill in for, and there's also been some some time that he's uh, accumulated because of just rotating. With the defensive ends like Tyler Roberts and Jamal Statham playing, it's been a difficult uh, defensive end combo to crack, but he finally got a start with the injury to Tyler Roberts and was very productive in the Georgia Southern game. Now, let's spend a little time away from the football field with senior defensive end Brandon Timmons. Here on the Trojan Football Report, one of the things we really enjoy doing is going in-depth with a student athlete. We go with senior Brandon Timmons, defensive end out of Memphis, Tennessee. Brandon, talk about your season to this point. Talk about your career to this point. There's been a lot of perseverance for you to get to this point, would you Would you say? Oh, yes, sir. I say it's been, it's been a long, hard road, but like I said, just giving all the glory to God. Like I said, he put me in this position. And like I said, you know, you just got to make the best out of every opportunity you get, you know? So, like I said, I mean, like I said, as far as my career and everything, starting out from junior college, making my way to Division One, it's just been a long, hard road. But I mean, like I said, it, it just shows what hard work can really do for you in the end. Talk about your journey to Troy out of junior college. What uh, what did it come down to for you making that decision? Uh, like I said, it, it really wasn't hard. Troy sold itself. <laughs> you know, you, you look at Troy's record with D-Lyman and Marcus Ware and O.C. Muir, all those guys they put in the NFL. I was like, man, I can, I can easily go down here and be like, be like, be like those guys. So, like I said, it was, a, it was, a, it's, a, it's just a blessing down here to be down here, at Troy. You know, you know, you know, you know what's going on with this year and everything with the decline, and everything. But like I said, still, Troy still has a great track worker. Now, Brandon, you are from a football family. Your dad played Oklahoma State back in the oh, day, yes, right? Sir, yes, sir. What was that like growing up? I <laughs> uh, mean, you just had to live to the expectation. He um, have us in the room uh, when I was younger. You know, have us watching uh, Barry Sanders and all those guys, and trying to get me get me to get the football mindset in early. So, like I said, it's a it's a tradition. Uh, my uh, my uncle played at Arkansas State for a little while. Like I said, he 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 had us in the room too watching football. So you have to live up to the expectation. Would you say there was an advantage for you growing up where where not only was football stressed, but you had you had people you know who had played at the highest level of college football yes yeah, so i say it was i say it was the advantage like i said I, I i came when i came in it really wasn't that much different to me because like my, my dad had just talked to me about everything about division one and how it is and getting acclimated to the systems and everything like that like i said it was, you know you start off start off 
coming from junior college to D one, you know, it's kind of kind of a rough patch. But you get to you know get to know everybody and get along with everything. Everything's fine. You got a chance to uh, to play extended time against Georgia Southern. Talk about your performance in that game, and talk about your performance this season. Oh yes, sir. I, I believe I performed well. Like I said, I um, try to do the best with uh, all the opportunities I get. And it's just, it's just a blessing to be at this point in the season, um, coming from a red shirt, starting off where I, where I start off from there, and uh, building my way on up to a starting role now. So, like I said, it's just, it's just all I'm doing is blessed, man. It's just blessing. When you look at your daily schedule or your weekly schedule, being a Division One athlete, being a Division One student athlete. It always astounds me just how much is asked of you guys. Is it difficult? I don't know, I'm gonna say it is, <laughs> but like, hey, you gotta you gotta just put your foot down and, and get things done. But I, it's it's great that you know I, I I was a student athlete because it taught me a lot of things about life. You know, life is not nothing's ever gonna be given to you. You have to work for everything that you want. You have to stay at it. You know, work hard, pray. Um, get, give it, give it everything you got, because like I said, somebody else could be in the same position you in. So you have to have to be able to execute every every opportunity you get. Do you think much about life after football? Have you made plans? Oh yes, sir. Yes, sir. Like so I'm training in the NFL in the mm-hmm. spring, and uh, I want to kind of get into the coaching game. Uh, I really want to start um, a, try to GA a graduate assistant job. I really want to try, try to start on that here, and uh, try to move on in the coaching ranks. Maybe become a defensive line coach or defense coordinator, anything like that. Like I said, I just love the game of football. So, what's it been like playing for Coach Blakeney? Oh, bless him. That's a great dude. I, I love Coach Blakeney. Coach Blakeney like like another dad to me. I, I talk to him about anything, anything I need or anything I want to go, you know, talk to him about. There's nothing to it. All, all you got to do is go in there, sit down there. He, Sit around that table, and anything you need to get done, you just talk to them about it. Interesting stuff. Brandon Timmons is with us. Great to spend some time with you. Good luck the rest of the way. Yes, sir. Time now for our Trojan Top 5. The Top 5 highlights from Troy's game at Georgia Southern. A couple of field goals against South Alabama from 38-43 and nails that from 25 to get the Trojans. Kitchen to 35 and is the leading tackler for this team right there. You see him right there, number one. Watch him follow the ball. How you find him to do a couple lead tackle from the free safety position? Have him over. Five tackles tonight to lead Troy. Leads him on the season with 61 now. Allison. Smashed down by Sam Levy. Levy smart. Will hands it off to Barney Franklin. And he's at the far side all the way to midfield. 24 yard gain. Franklin again off of tackle. And he's in, touchdown. So the Trojans fall to Georgia Southern. They come back home. It's a it's a tough stretch to get to get through with on the road in the league that, that Troy has has gotten through. Now back home against a Georgia State club that boy fought you tooth and nail up in the dome last year, coach. They really did, man. And uh, they still got some of those guys left, plus a guy named Nick Arbuckle, who they I think is a California junior college transfer that came in there and has uh, has made made that position a positive for him, the quarterback position, throwing the ball and actually running it some on quarterback draws and zone reads and different type plays. And uh, so, you know, he he makes them a threat. He makes them uh, able to move the football and score points. And uh, so, uh, you know, Trent Miles, is, I, I don't know, I think this is his second or third year, second year. and. And uh, they have not had a lot of success, but he's held this team together, and uh, and they are they're playing at a level that gives them a chance to win some games. And certainly, I know that they're looking for the stretch just like we are. Yeah, the uh, the game is in Troy, and I know that's that's got to be a positive for you well, guys to the last three. Home. It's always good to play at home. We got two out of the last three here. And, uh, you know, of course, those will be two, two games, uh, uh, well, uh, my last three games as a head football coach here. So, so we'll, uh, we'll look forward to maybe having some good crowds and support these young men. And uh, I know on that last game we're going to have a little get-together with former players and, and fans after, after the game. So I'm that, that, uh, looking forward to that. But this game is vitally important to us to have some positiveness going into the final three. And, uh, and wins are, are always paramount. Yep. Two o'clock start time at Larry Blakeney Field at Veterans Memorial Stadium, ESPN3 telecast, and of course on the Troy Sports Radio Network. Coach, good luck with it. Thank you very much.
That's the head coach of the Troy Trojans, Larry Blakeney. Make it out there to the game, if at all possible. Get your tickets in advance at 877-878-WINS. We hope you're out there. And as well, we hope you join us again for another edition next week of the Trojan Football Report.